Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Debbie Kale, and I was thrilled to be asked by Alana to speak about the Talmud class. Uh, even though I was, a, I was a latecomer to the class, I just uh, jumped in the second semester of it, but I was so glad to find it, and it's been it's been really a highlight of my week. And that was part of how I wanted to, to start off just with some general observations before I got into a couple more specific lessons I've learned, but. Um, wherever I've lived, I've always tried to, to find different adult education classes to take and to kind of, you know, I guess there, there's the, the secular way of um, saying this, like, you know, in uh, time management, you know, you put the big rocks in and then the small rocks fall in around them, and it's always been really important to me to keep learning and have a space for it, but uh, the Jewish way of saying that, of course, is to say, don't, stay, don't uh, say that you'll study when you have time because who knows when you'll have time. And so uh, for me, having a schedule and a place to be and having signed up for something really helps me make sure that I have uh, time for learning in the week. And so I really appreciated the opportunity to have this class in particular. I've learned a lot and I think that Alana does a great job of moving us forward and you know making time for us to deviate a little bit and also um, really making the, the class a high level while making sure that those of us who see Hebrew wasn't as great had, you know, can keep up with it. So I really appreciate that balance. Um, in, um, in studying this past semester, um, Bracho chapter two, there was, I wanna share something that I, I shared part of with the, the class earlier. So about something that stuck out to me through, um, I don't know, when I was reflecting for my kind of end of the class speech, this, this really stuck out to me. And we, one of the things that we studied was about when to, when you should say the Shema and how to say it and in what context you should say the Shema. And so it gives two uh, examples to, to help you understand when you should say the Shema. So it says uh, laborers should fulfill their obligation of, res, uh, of reciting the Shema um, if they're atop of certain types of trees, like if it's stable enough, then it would be okay to fulfill your obligation to say the Shema, but if it's not stable enough and you would be risking your life or not having, not being able to be uh, focused enough, then you can't. Uh, then you gotta come down from your tree <laughs> and say the Shema. And, uh, and it was saying also that the homeowner always has to stop what they're doing and pray and say the Shema. And so there's never um, an example where the person who's in charge can keep doing what they're doing. They have to stay with their obligation. And um, the other example of that I that were put into the same uh, mouthful almost but would seem very different is that a groom is exempt from saying the Shema on his wedding night. And um, the, the thought is that he has other things to worry about besides uh, fulfilling his obligation to recite the Shema. And so um, both of these are examples of um, the in the Biahafta when we would say um, when you would say when you're on your way. And so this, the synopsis of this piece really talked about, well, what does it mean on your way? Or um, is one piece of this said on his way? And so the redefinition of on your way is if you're doing something voluntary, you should always make time to fulfill your obligation to say the Shema. So if you're the homeowner or the employer, and te technically, you know, you might have a little bit more flexibility in your schedule and you're able to, then you should always stop what you're doing because it, it might be seen as voluntary what you're doing. And so you should always pause to fulfill your obligation of saying the Shema. Um, but when it drew a distinction um, in talking about the groom saying on his way, is if he was on his way to, uh, to fulfill a mitzvah. And so, and then it was said, if you're on your way to fulfill a specific mitzvah, then you um, are not obligated to pause that in order to fulfill the other mitzvah of saying the Shema. And um, for, for me, when I, the, I read this over several times and it felt very convoluted at first. Um, I think it's Talmud normally does the first few times I read it. <laughs> but it really helps me find new meaning in this, this one phrase of the Via Hafta that um, generally when it's saying, um, you know, and on your way, what it means is when you're kind of just going about your business, don't be so about your business that you forget to fulfill your mitzvah. Um, but when you're on your way, like you're actively um, on a derech, on a path to be um, 
fulfilling a mitzvah as a, as a groom might be on the, on his wedding night, then you then that's great, and you should stay focused on the way that you are personally on. And so I think that there's some nice lessons both about when or when you might not say the Shema, but really just in general how to live our lives and our Jewish lives in a secular world. And so if it's saying when you're on your way generally, you know, make time, uh, you know, of course more specifically to say the Shema, but I would extrapolate and say make time for the Jewish part of your world and make time for the Jewish part of your life. And um, similarly, if you're on a very specific path to do something Jewish, you know, focus on that and let that be the thing that you're focused on. And I think even more so in this, um, because there's so many Jewish, and even as you said, there's all these love but more things we could go and be doing, and it's great that we are on our Jewish way, you know, being here right now. Um, and even the more so, I think, when you're on your way specifically, um, I think that certainly in our society we're so connected. It's very hard to stay focused on any one thing. Um, even when Alana was talking, I was making a note to myself of something that I didn't want to forget that popped into my head. And I find myself like this all the time, trying to stay focused on one thing when my mind is racing with lots of different things. And so I think that this teaches me in the largest way that I should try to, when I'm on my way, um, not on a way, but when I'm on my way, I should really try to stay focused on what I am trying to accomplish and know that that is a good way to be spending my time in that moment and that there'll be time for other obligations or responsibilities in other moments. So um, yeah, I hope that that's like a nice little uh, nugget for you guys to start off this uh, scene. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.